Mm. I'm with Jill Eisenberger, who is the Executive Director of Stone Barns. So thanks for having us here today, Jill. The, the place is beautiful. Can you tell us what your mission is here at Stone Barns? I'd love to. Uh, the mission of Stone Barns is to change the way America eats and farms. So we are very interested in something that we describe as resilient agriculture. And we are very interested in the diet or what needs to be on the plate to support resilient agriculture. So we want people to kind of change the pattern of growing and eating so that we have healthier soils, healthier water, healthier people. Wow, that is a big undertaking. <laughs> it sure how, is. How do you, what are some examples of programs you invest in? Mm -hmm. So we, um, we do significant work with young farmers. So the average age of the farmer in the U.S. is um, over 58 years old and fewer than 6% of our farmers are under 35. Wow. So we are extremely concerned about the future of growing food because there are too few young people who are interested in agriculture. And the kind of agriculture that we're advocating for really relies on intelligent, well-educated folks, like some of the farmers you're meeting here today, to carry us forward into something that is a, a kind of farming that is more sympathetic to nature um, than some of the industrial monoculture that we see in our society today. So Jill, why are there not as many young farmers farming today? So there are multiple challenges if you go into agriculture. So the cost of land, uh, the cost of capital to start a business, so the machinery you need, the seeds you need, if you need any support for labor. So it's a really high cost of entry for a young entrepreneur. So I recently told a story of Chris Ann Christensen, who's an apprentice who works here at Stone Barns, and she is interested in moving back to Netherland, Colorado, um, where she has roots, and she wants to start a small-scale vegetable production operation and develop and sell seeds. And so we sat down with her to do a little business plan and figured that she needed between two hundred and fifty and three hundred thousand dollars to start her to business. Start. Yeah. And banks do not know how to lend to farmers, especially farmers working in diversified agriculture, because a business plan doesn't look like a typical business plan mm -hmm. that farm credit has seen, which is for soy and corn rotation. So it's just a really, really difficult space in which to be an entrepreneur, and then you're up against mother nature on top of that. So it's very, very risky. You know, Do you give scholarships to these young farmers that come in as part of the foundation? So one of the things you might do is give a scholarship to an intern or an apprentice yep. so that they can then go and start their own farm, and then do they pay you back or do they yeah. We don't typically give them scholarships after they leave the mm -hmm. farm, so we help support them while they're here. They receive a stipend. What we do for them that I think is incredibly helpful is we help them connect with um, investors who are interested in agriculture. Mm -hmm. We help them connect with chefs, with CSA providers, with others wow. who can be their customers. We help them network with seed breeders in the region they want to go to. We help them try to find access to land through land trusts and conservation organizations we know. So we really leverage the connections that a, that a place like this that's really become a beacon for agriculture has. So you become a mentor for exactly. how many people, how many apprentices do you have a year? We typically have between 6 and 12. So it's a very intensive program. So you take Jack Algier, who yes. you spoke with earlier, and one of the real benefits to being here if you're a young person is to spend a lot of hours with Jack, just working with him and really getting that transfer of knowledge that he's accumulated over his you know, lifetime of, of farming and growing. So we try to keep the numbers small so that those one-on-one -on -one interactions can happen. But we've been doing this program for eight or 10 years, so we have more than 100 apprentices out there in the world now working on farms or food systems change or... Do you feel at Stone Barns you're on the forefront of this revolution? In a way, it's a food revolution. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like people are coming to, you, to the foundation now and mm -hmm. saying, please tell us how we can, we can do this soil and rejuvenate mm -hmm. the soil? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I like, I like to think we are. I think that there are many, many dynamic and interesting people working in the food movement. I think we have a couple sweet spots. So um, what I'm really excited about that we're doing here is I feel like we're placing a deep bet on people. So kind of the next generation of dynamic leaders who are really gonna help change the food system. And so we talked about young farmers, but the other place we're doing that is with young chefs. 
And so what I love is the intersection between those young farmers and young chefs. So we have the opportunity to have a very rapid feedback loop. So Jason Grauer, one of our field managers, can grow something, take it into a great young cook who's working in Dan Barber's kitchen and get immediate feedback about, does it taste good? Is it high quality? What do you think of it? And, and so I think we are one of the few organizations that sits at the intersection of growing, so supply and demand eating. And we can think about how can we shape those two things together in a way that will lead to a pattern of growing and eating that is more sustainable. So we went over the whole farm today. It's amazing. You uh -huh. should be so proud of this place. And I'm glad you're getting to tell the story the, you know, of, of this not-for-profit because it's not-for-profits like this that do change the world and bring information to to other people. Uh, you were given the land by by the Rockefellers, is that, is correct. that correct? The land and the building. The land and the building. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about um, their investment in this. Yeah. So they have, a, they have a great story in American agriculture. So David Rockefeller, who turned 100 in June. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, and is the Because he's been eating well. So he's right, he's been, been eating he's well. He's probably exactly. got, the, got the special seeds from this farm. <laughs> he's been eating well, exactly. That's what we like to think. So he, um, his wife was very active in creating an organization called the American Farmland Trust. And their reason for being was to protect farmland. So in the 80s, they got very concerned about suburban sprawl. And she um, basically started that organization single-handedly, recruited several of her friends, and it's become a great contributor in the food movement today in the space of land protection. And so when she died, her husband, David Rockefeller, said, I want to think about something I can do mm. as a tribute to Peggy and, you know, her life's work. And he loved these buildings. He remembered coming here as a little boy and licking warm milk off the dairy milking machines. Wow. So he tells a story about that. And I think it was really important to him to know that the buildings would be preserved forever. And so he started looking at all kinds of things that could be done here. They looked at a spa and hotel. They looked at it as a place for all the, a home for all the nonprofits in Westchester and um, started to work with a team of people to shape this really inspired vision about a nonprofit farm and education center combined mm -hmm. with a restaurant and really creating a campus that was about the future of food and the future of eating. And um, so it was really his kind of inspiration and I think Peggy's spirit, quite frankly, that made them choose and decide to do something around food. And, and they did that at a time that was really both smart and lucky. So, you know, when the food movement was really taking off, they were working to build this place. And it's really become a beacon for uh, many, many great kinds of conversations about change. So how many acres did they donate to they, the foundation? They donated all 80 acres that we occupy. And, and all the beautiful buildings. All the beautiful buildings, and they helped uh, provide some initial seed funding to renovate the buildings and have been incredibly generous to make sure the place thrives and grows. Mm -hmm.